morning, Quadcopter 101 here. And today we got a three for for the shout out. We got three winners for the notification squad. And those are Andy23284 and Curb. And finally, Physiart. All three of those were first to say first in one of my recent videos and thus wins the shout out. So congratulations. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 with a review of a neat new drone. Actually, this is a neat new drone. This is the SG906 Beast. Now, last year, uh, there was a release of the original SG-906, which I got right here, which is almost the same airframe on it, but there's a lot of differences in regards to the camera, folks, between this and what was released, or between this and what was released last year. Last year, we had a camera that was a fixed camera. Actually, I think you could tilt it up or down, but it uh, did not have SD recording capability. It recorded via Wi-Fi to your phone only. Um, there was some electronic image stabilization that was done through your phone. It was kind of sketchy how it worked. Uh, but otherwise, the drone itself, the original SG-906 drone itself, the airframe, was great. Long flyer, 20 minutes with its uh, 7.4 volt, 28,000 28, or 2,800 milliamp per hour battery. Good flying drone, in other words. Um, what ZLRC has done since then is gone back to the drawing board and improve that camera okay that was the big thing that they needed to do and indeed they did and what we got now folks is a, a camera a 4k camera now they say 4k it's actually two 2.5k video and 4k photos that this takes uh, but with a gimbal let me remove its cover here's one important thing about the cover for the gimbal make sure you remove this before flight and the way you remove it is you have to pinch both of these in from the side and you have to push down at the same time in the back and then it slides off pops off so don't lose this cover you're going to need that to protect the gimbal but there we go we have now a two axis gimbal on this with the camera to provide stable video that's the big biggie thing that this drone can now do we now have stable video uh, for uh, air in-flight video okay other things about this um, again it's a folding quadcopter which means we can fold fold it down into a compact size you know, for travel in your backpack or <laughs> with there is the option of a camera or a uh, drone case for this uh, particular drone it's actually a very nice uh, case for this drone so I recommend getting that if it's offered as an option I don't remember if it if it's standard or not I have to look in the listing but uh, the carrying case is nice um, it's also available with uh, two or three batteries, one, two or three batteries. I recommend getting at least a two battery version. This is a great flyer, a long flyer. Uh, the original flew for 20 minutes with this battery, so I'm expecting this to do the same. So, you know, each battery gives you another 20 minutes of flight time. So if you're interested in this drone, get that. Other things about it, um, I mentioned the 4K camera, SD record, it's recorded to an SD card. Again, the original did not have SD card recording capability. Now we do, folks, and I recommend getting a good SD card since this is high very high resolution video. Uh, you're going to need something that gets good write speed, well above class 10. I'd recommend U1, U2, U3 cards, um, no greater than 32 gigabyte, because as I believe these, there's still a limitation in max 32 gigabyte for uh, the card that you put into this SD card reader. See, how it pops in, pops out. Okay, other things we got on it. We do have optical flow, and I'm going to talk about that here shortly with the transmitter. But uh, the optical flow holds the drone steady when you don't have sufficient satellites for GPS. Uh, and once you do have sufficient satellites for GPS, the optical flow is turned off and it switches to GPS mode. And I'll talk about that again. You'll get a little beep on the controller, an indication on your controller whether you're in uh, mode 1, which is called optical flow mode, and mode 2, which is called... GPS mode for this for this particular drone. Um, other things about it, it supposedly has you know an improvement in range. Okay, they're saying this has 1,200 meter control range with a controller and 600 to 800 meters FPV range on your phone that you could view FPV video from via Wi-Fi to your phone from 600 to 800 meters. I find that hard to believe. Okay, that's pretty darn far for FPV, especially since this and control range. Uh, this controller does not have any 
visible. You know, you've got these antennas, but they appear to be fake. I don't see any wires running up in them. So I'm not sure if that is true or not. We will find out when we take it out into the desert here and fly it, whether that does have extended range. Um, it also has advanced flight features of follow me, circle me, and waypoints, and along with the FPV video that you view on your phone. And you view this using the HFUN Plus app, okay? Or actually, I'm correction, HFUN Plus was the original. They're using now the HFUN Pro app. So look for HFUN Pro app on Google Play or iTunes um, to use with this particular phone. And now i got to give you that caveat. This is a 5 gigahertz 802.11 AC Wi-Fi FPV drone. You need a phone with 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. Not all phones have 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, especially older phones. So before purchasing this drone, I strongly recommend that you first verify that your phone indeed has 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, or you will be very disappointed. Okay, just giving you that caveat there. Okay, let's talk about uh, what you get in the box. In the box, you get the drone. You get a, the original battery for the drone, which goes in here. Let me talk about the battery real quick. It is a 2800 milliamp hour battery, 7.4 volts, as you see there. On the front of it, or on the side of it, we have a little uh, uh, micro USB port that you charge this using a micro USB cable through a phone wall charger. I recommend at least a 2 amp wall charger because this is a big battery, folks. You try to charge this through your computer port, it's going to take a day or two. Um, using a 2 amp or better, it'll cut it down to hours instead of a day. <laughs> so, um, It has uh, indicator lights on the front showing you if it's charged, fully charged, is four lights. And it has this snap for seating uh, the battery into the drone. And let's talk about that. When you slide this in, don't slam it in. Just slide it in as far as it'll go there. Now this clip, don't try to force this clip past its stop there. Instead, pull down on the button, slide it in, and then push up to make sure it's seated. Okay. Otherwise, you will break this if you just slam it in. That's, you're going to break that tab. So pull it down, push the battery in, and then push the tab back up. Okay, that's the battery. Um, other things you get in this, you get a, a series of instruction manuals in different languages and they include German, Japanese, French, Italian, Spanish, and English. No Chinese manual, surprisingly. <laughs> so, but uh, they are they are pretty good manuals. The problem with them are is though, uh, if you've got old eyes like mine, you are going to need a magnifying glass to read these things. But <laughs> follow along in my video and it should help you get your drone into the air because I'll go over the steps for calibration uh, along with um, compass calibration, which is very important. Um, you also get this warning card telling you about the the clip, the retainer clip that goes, protection clip that goes over your gimbal. Remove it before flight, very important, and it shows you how to remove it. Pay attention. Read that and do it. Um, you get a micro USB cable for uh what is this for? Oh, for charging the battery because <laughs> again you have to use micro usb cables to charge your battery you get a screwdriver and the screwdriver is for this full spare set of propellers so if you ding up the propellers you've got a full set of spares along with uh, little screws for uh, installing that propeller and of course you get the controller now let's go over the controller again um, it has fake antennas it looks like i don't really believe these are real antennas but this is also a phone holder here so you can slide your phone in to view the video. Um, let's go over the controls. Again, this, this is only available in mode 2. So that means this is throttle, this is yaw, this is pitch, and this is roll on the sticks. And on the back, we have uh, four buttons on the back. These ones on the right side, this is for up and down of the gimbal. So you can remotely point the gimbal up or down by press up and down by pressing these buttons here. These buttons on the right is for headless mode. You press the button here in the center, the center button for headless mode to activate it. And this button here is for automatic takeoff and automatic landing once you have the motor started. And to start the motors, to start the motors, bring, bring and hold both sticks either down and out or down and in and the motors will start. And then you can take off by either applying throttle or pressing this automatic takeoff button here. 
Other buttons on this, you have a control button or a power button right here for turning it on and off. Now again, you see down in the lower right, it says mode zero. Uh, when it's connected to the drone, it initially says mode one, which means the drone is in optical flow mode. And once that has sufficient satellites, which it would be 11, which show up here, this number zero, uh, once that reaches 11, then this will automatically switch to mode 2, which means GPS mode, and the drone is flying in GPS. So if you want to fly in altitude hold, you have to take off immediately after connecting. <laughs> um, if you want to fly in GPS, you have to wait until you have uh, sufficient satellites to fly, and it says mode 2, and then you can fly in GPS. Once you're in GPS mode, you can't, sw you can't switch back to altitude hold mode in the air. You have to restart the drone if you want to fly in altitude hold mode. Other things on here, we have uh, telemetry for height and distance of the drone. Uh, again, mode 1 and mode 2 uh, means mode 1 is optical flow, mode 2 is GPS. We have battery power of the controller and also telemetry battery power of the drone. We're not connected right now, so it's showing the drone's battery is empty. Um, other buttons on this, we have this button here is for changing the rates, the speed of the drone, uh, particularly... If you want to fly faster, you press it once and hear the two beeps. If you want to fly slower, you press it once and hear that one beep. Um, if you hold the button down for three seconds, it enters the drone into GPS, uh, cal or not GPS, uh, gyroscope calibration. Um, you want to do that uh, at home or on a flat level surface. Put the drone on a flat level surface and then press that button and that will calibrate the gyros. You hold that button down. Um, it does have automatic return to home and landing on loss of signal, on uh, low voltage, and on command. And to do it on command, you just press this button here. And the drone will fly back and land where it took off from. Other buttons on this, this button here is for starting or stopping video. And you do a quick press of this button to activate the video camera. And you'll see it show up on your app. And also down here, you'll see a little uh, indicator showing the video camera has started. And finally, this button here is for taking those 4K resolution photos by a quick press of that button. And you can enter the drone into compass calibration mode by holding down the photo button for five seconds. And then these lights will start to bleep or blink rapidly three times. Blink, 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 blink like that. And you do three counterclockwise turns uh, horizontal, with the drone held horizontally and then point the nose down of the drone and do another three counterclockwise turns to complete the calibration. Each time you do complete the horizontal, you'll hear a beep, and when you complete the uh, vertical nose down, you'll hear another beep on the controller telling you the uh, calibration is complete and your lights will uh, light up solid. And they'll rapidly break when, blink when in compass calibration mode and then they'll go rapidly solid once you're compass calibration is completed and I'll demonstrate that in the field and again it's important that I said counterclockwise because I tried this clockwise it did not want to calibrate I had to go counterclockwise and then every, everything was fine so well that is my tabletop on this let's take the uh, Beast Pro ZLR, ZLRC 906 uh, Pro out into the field and see how it flies so hope you enjoy this flight Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here on a beautiful spring day out here in the desert. A little bit hazy, though. Um, with the SG906 Pro from ZLRC. Let's see how it goes here. Okay, to start this up, all we need to do is put it on the pad. And then open up its propellers, folks. Um, don't, don't let them open up by centrifugal or centripetal acceleration only, as they may be unbalanced. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, there we go. That's good enough. That should do it. Now, one thing important is to make sure, you know, I took off that cover, okay? Make sure you remove that cover <laughs> from that gimbal. I got it in my pocket before energizing it. And also make sure that the, the uh, gimbal is clear of any obstructions uh, because it's going to go through its uh, uh, leveling uh, calibration as we turn on the drone. So now to turn on the drone, you know, press and hold this back button on the battery until you hear a beep. Then let go. And lights are rapidly flashing, telling me that the um, gimbal is doing, going through its calibration right now. And we're going to wait until that's done. And also I'm going to turn on the transmitter. And the transmitter should be connected, and it is. And I can tell because I can see the receiver's battery power. Now I know that we're connected. Again, we are in mode 1 right now with 5 satellites. That means we're in altitude hold mode. And it's searching for satellites right now. But what I want to do is go in and do a compass calibration. 
And to do such, you hold down the photo key right here for three seconds until you hear a beep. Okay, and we are not in compass calibration. We actually have uh, satellites to fly, but I want to do a compass calibration. So <laughs> let's do that again. Again, right now we got 10 satellites. I guess you need nine satellites to, to fly because we are right now in um, GPS mode, mode two. But again, let's do that compass calibration. Hold it down until we hear a beep. Okay, now we should be in compass calibration mode and the lights are rapidly flashing here and here. I don't know if you can see that or not. Okay, again, counterclockwise, three turns until we hear a beep. Well, we heard the beep. Then nose down counterclockwise until we hear another beep. And there we go. And that should have done it. Let's put it down on the ground. Although it's still flashing. <laughs> Let's try that again because the light should not be flashing right now. So we'll there. And then downward. Okay, I got solid lights. <laughs> now it's happy. Wait until you see solid lights. Keep rotating either vertically or horizontally until those lights turn solid. That tells you the compass calibration is complete. And again, I got 10 satellites right now. Mode 2. Now I'm going to connect my phone to the drone's Wi-Fi signal and then open up the H-Fun uh, which app? Pro app. <laughs> so hold on folks. Okay, this is the H-Fun Pro app available on Google Play or I and iTunes. Um, it has instructions. If you want to read the instructions, they are available in there that you can scroll through in this app. Um, it keeps records of flights that you made. Um, you can calibrate the gyros and compass using the app too by pressing that calibrate button. Um, but we, since we did it, I'm not going to do it again. You can adjust settings of the drone. Let's open that up. And it set the language to English if it shows up in Chinese. You can do that in the settings button. Um, record off or on. Um, we want to record, so record is, no, off. I don't know what, I think, I'm not sure what record button does, folks. Uh, let's just skip that one here. Firmware upgrade, I pressed that, and it's whatever you downloaded. If you downloaded from Google Play or iTunes, you got the latest version of this app. Uh, stabilization, turn that off because this has gimbal stabilization. That's, um, if you turn that on, it, it stabilizes through your phone using your phone's processor, but that can take, that creates a lot of lags. Just keep that off, along with 4K correction since this is already a high resolution camera drone. Uh, that's for, well, <laughs> that's interpolation. That turns 4K interpolation on, and that also creates lag, so keep that off. So we hit setup complete. And to get into the, uh, to view FPV, you got to hit start play. So let's press that button. And we should see FPV here shortly. And there we go. We've got an FPV signal video. And keep distance more than three meters. And we're going to hit submit. So we are ready to fly right now. Okay, to start up, oh, we got 17 satellites. So this should be a good flight. So to start up the motors, down. Or actually, let me start the recording, video recording first too, before I forget. Quick press of the video button starts the video recording. And start the motors, both sticks down and out, and then give it a little throttle to take off. You could also use the auto takeoff button. I like to give it a little throttle myself. <laughs> Let me get in the picture here. First off, let's check the stability. You seeing any toilet bowl effect? No. So the compass calibration is complete. Come down a little lower too. Get in the picture. I guess got to come down a little lower. Even more lower. Oh yeah, that's right. I can lower that gimbal using this right button. Let's go up a little bit higher. Let's try that. Down. That's up. So this would be down. No, I guess that's the wrong button. <laughs> down. Got it. I'm pointing it up. There we go. Now it should be pointed down. There we go. I am seeing some lag in the FPV signal between uh, what I'm seeing on the drone and in the air. But in the meantime, how do you like my shirt today, folks? Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of lag in the FPV video signal. I, I hope it's not recording that way, but we'll see. Okay, raising the camera back up. Here, let's just show you that. Look at the gimbal. And as I hit down, see it go down and going back up. It actually can point up too. It can point all the way down. Yes, it can. 
Okay, but with that in mind, let's leave it like that. We are up. Boy, that lag. And down. Let's get that set. Let's go up a bit higher. And we're going to check its range. Let me put my glasses back on while it's still here. Glasses on. And we're going to push forward and actually climb up higher to improve the signal. And even though these are fake antennas, I think they are fake antennas, I'm going to try to keep them pointed just to give it a benefit of the doubt. And let's go forward and upward and away. Climbing too at the same time as we go on because I'm going to keep that above the mountains. We'll see what type of FPV signal we get and FPV range and control range. Turn to the left a bit. Okay, we are only 50 meters away. And I'm going to be flying slow, folks. We're going to keep the rates low for this first flight just to see. Um, again, my video signal is real choppy, what I'm seeing. But going up higher. And just keep going out until that video signal fr freezes. I'm going to keep the flat end of my pen or back end of my phone pointed toward the drone. Going up a bit higher, more. 150 meters away. 160, 170. Still have some FPV signal. Going up a bit higher. We are at a height of 23 meters, still going up on 226 meters away. Still have FPV signal. And still have FPV signal at 274. And coming up on 300 meters. Still have signal. Although it's choppy, it's flyable with this, I gotta say. But I can still see that big black drone up in the sky, so don't worry about that also, folks. <laughs> That's why I like to fly on cloudless days out here in the dead desert. I keep the drone above the, the mountains in the distance, and I can still see that thing at this distance. Where are we at? Coming up on 400 meters. Still there. 420 meters. Still going up, bud. That's my FPV signal. Is it froze? I think my FPV might have froze. So we, you know, it keeps coming back. <laughs> okay, coming up on 500 meters. So this is pretty good. I still have, I, I still have FPV. It's choppy, but I still have it. Go up higher to keep an eye on that drone. Coming up, 500. I'm gonna take it to 600 meters or so. My battery's still good. I can still see that drone even coming up on 570 meters. Big black drone up in the sky. Let me go up a bit higher too so I can see it a little better. I think my FPV is frozen in there. Remote control is reaching its limit too at 575 meters. I can still see it. Don't want to go any further. So 575 meters seems to be the range of the controller, folks. Oh, no, 589. Let me push it forward again. We'll take it farther. I can still see it. 593 meters. And again, I think I lost it again. Okay, I am going to hit return to home. Okay, automatic return to home from that. The rate, oh, 607 meters I got. It's gone on a little further. So let's go a little further. So control distance is around 600 meters. I'm going to stop it right there. That's about it, folks. I don't think I can go any further with the controller. So return to home button, pressing it. Return to home has been activated. And we'll see if it starts coming back. I am not seeing the control range decrease. I'm walking toward it a bit here. 
Oh wait, 611, okay, I got the signal back, 580, it's coming back now. Yeah, we'll see how accurate the return to Hoban landing is. So we took it out to max range with controller, it seems to be about 600 meters, folks. This is what I got out here. Um, I'm not sure about the FPV range, we'll look at that in post-editing. It's kind of bright out here, I'm having a hard time see, seeing on my phone, my particular phone out here in the desert, seeing if it froze. But I was trying to keep my eye on the drone the whole flight, <laughs> so I don't like to lose sight of my drones. Okay, I'm moving back from the pad so we can see how accurate its return to home and landing is. And also, I'm probably going to stop its descent because I don't want to land in the grass <laughs> or the weeds here. It's getting a little... Okay, it's slowed down there. Now it's coming, finalizing its approach. Got my head up, pointed up high so you can see it, I hope. And we'll see how accurate that landing is as it comes down. And it should be descending here shortly. How high are we? 28 meters. So it comes back at about 28, 30 meters up, I guess, is the setting for its return to home. Coming down. Coming down. And it looks like we're going to be off by a few meters, <laughs> a couple of meters. About a, I don't know, about a meter and a half. Grass cutter. Okay. And let's stop the video recording now. Okay, I hope that recorded properly. Especially when we went out of range. <laughs> we'll find out again in post-production. So, and I'm seeing lag <laughs> on my video. Um, next thing we've got to do is start the camera again. And this one, okay, is the camera recording? Camera's not recording. Okay, so I'm not sure why the camera's not recording. Let's see, let's try it on the phone or using the app. Okay, app. So for some reason, the camera's not recording. What I am going to do is restart the drone. Okay, let's see if I can get that camera recording. Um, this is either a bug in the software, firmware, or the app. But I repeat it, pressing and the camera recording is not starting recording. So let's start, restart the drone and uh, reconnect and see if we can get that camera recording again. This might be an issue because I flew out of range of the controller, so I'm not sure. So let's turn this off and start over again. Okay, I restarted the drone, restarted the controller, restarted the app. I'm not going to do the compass calibration again. Uh, it should be still happy with it because we're still at the same site that it was flying with uh, before. But let's get back in the air and do such like so, give it a little throttle, going up. And what I wanted to do is demonstrate the photos of this. And let's point the camera down. So you see me, get a little closer in the picture. See, how do you like my shirt today, folks? <laughs> okay, that's enough. That's, that's the photos it takes. One more, just to make sure I got a couple. Okay. Those were its photos. Okay, let's point that camera. Let's leave that camera. No, let's point it up a bit. So we can see a little bit of horizon. Now, keep in mind, if you see the props, you can lower that camera down. I'm not sure whether I'm seeing the props or not in my video here. <laughs> but in a sunny day. But if you can't, if they are showing up, you can lower that uh, gimbal down to eliminate that. So, first thing I want to do is we're going to demonstrate circle me, circle position. So on the app, I'm clicking on it. Also, let me make sure that Mobazin is recording. Okay, Mobazin is recording. I was just checking that. Uh, that would be bad if I did, if I, you can't see the screenshots of this. Let's try that circle position. So on the app, clicking circle position. And then hitting that, we're going to do uh, is it clockwise or counterclockwise. But there we go, I hit it. Okay, this assumes that this is where what you want to circle around. And it goes out and it seems to be about 
<laughs> setting its position. Seems to be, it starts at about five meters. We'll see if we can adjust that circle. But, and it should start circling here shortly. I guess you gotta tell which direction to go, no? <laughs> and it's flying directly overhead. I'm trying to give it pitch and roll, but nothing's going on there. How about lowering? Okay, we're going to try that again. Circle position. See what's going on here. Let's try the first one and submit. Setting data. Please wait. So, what's going on with you, circle position? And I'll start the video recording. Circle position seems to be an issue <laughs> with the app. Okay, start a video recording. It's not doing anything, folks, so we're going to break out of circle position. So let's try the follow maze. Turning it toward me. Okay, point it toward me. And I should be in view. And I am. And there is significant lag, is what I'm seeing on the screen. But we are going to use uh, GPS follow me, which means it's going to follow my phone. So selecting that, let's see what it does. It plops itself there, and let's start walking around the desert and see if it follows. Yeah, it is. And with the gimbal, the video should be somewhat stable. Okay, let's go walk away from it. And I'm looking on my screen <laughs> to see, see if there's nothing behind me. Let's try running a bit. Old man running on a warm day in the desert. Is it following me? Why? Yeah, it is. <laughs> let's see how close it gets before it stops right about there. Okay, let's go toward it now. Old man walking toward it. When's it gonna figure out that I'm following or I'm chasing it? And what's it gonna do? It's gonna slide off to that direction. So this is a DJI style of follow me, like being pulled on a string. <laughs> there we go. So if you're wondering, it's a DJI style. Follow me. And follow me works. I wish the circle may work, but it didn't seem to work. So, we'll call it quits with the follow me's by going in there. Now there's another type of follow me that's got, and that's optical. Let's try that. And to do that, we gotta lower the gimbal a bit. Until you see me. And you gotta get closer for optical follow me. Right about there. I don't think this is going to work well because of the lag, folks. But we'll find out. Let's go up a bit. And hit follow me again. And we're going to select optical, which is the first one on the selection list. And hit submit. Mainly, mainly I think this is for indoor flying for follow me. But I would not recommend flying this drone indoors. Adapting to mobile phone performance. Okay, you do that adaption. <laughs> so, apparently it doesn't like my mobile phone, which is a uh, Echo X520. Probably meant for higher grade phones. So we, uh, adapt failed, okay. So we're gonna skip the optical follow me. It doesn't work with older phones, obviously. Maybe that's why I got so much lag. So let's come out of that follow me. And we did circle me. How about waypoints? Let's raise the drone camera up. Of course, I always press the wrong button. Up, up, there we go. I'm seeing significant lag, folks. Let me start and stop that video, too, to make sure we got that video. Video is recording. Okay, waypoint, selecting waypoint. And I'm gonna do that type of waypoint flying. Now, I want maps. But I tried to download maps for this last night, and it doesn't seem to like that. But, uh, Okay, waypoints. Let's put one here. What type of waypoint? OK, 
Okay. Waypoints. Having problems with waypoints too, so the waypoints on this app are a bit buggy too. Probably my phone again, so I apologize if it is my phone. And if it's not, <laughs> it might be the drone itself. So coming out of that, if I can, and it's not. I'm trying to break out of that. Now it won't let me come out of waypoints. So let's put it on the dry on the ground again, folks. Boy, this drone is should be great, but this app is buggy. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can get it going again. Start play. Submit. Okay, we do have video again. Okay, waypoints, follow me, circle me didn't work. Uh, finally, what else do I want to do? I know what I want to do. I want to lower that camera all the way down and get under the drone like I am right now <laughs> and start video recording with the video camera and then do a rocket. Up and away! <laughs> there it goes. Up, 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 up. And the ceiling seems to be set right now to 21 meters. I'm not sure. Because I'm giving it more throttle to go up higher and I don't want to go up higher. So let's come back down. And I'm going to try to figure out why. Okay, in the settings, I'm not sure if I saw a geofence. So we're going to bring it in and land it. Land it on its pad, and I'm going to look at the settings. Well, actually, let's just leave it right there. Lower that camera, too. And let me go into settings of this and see if there is a geofence setting. Settings. No, I do not see a geofence setting there. So I'm not sure why it did not go up higher than 21 meters there. But let's go back to start play. Submit. On this bright sunny day. And one more thing we're going to try. Let's lower that camera gimbal. Oh, I know why it's probably not going up higher. Because our battery is getting low. <laughs> Let me pop in another battery. We'll do that again. I, I'm seeing flashing lights here. See the flashing lights there? So that means that's why it didn't go up higher than 21 meters, 20 meters, is we're getting low on battery power. So for the remainder of the flight, let's I want to see how long this will fly. I got another battery. We'll plop that in to do these other things here, again here shortly. But let's just fly around the area. I, I'm betting there's probably a geofence. It's probably not going to let me go greater than 30 meters. If it don't let me go higher than 20, it's probably not going to let me go higher or more distant than 30 with low battery. We'll see. Yep. Geofence is on. Low battery geofence is, comes with this drone, so I did not know that. Now I do. Uh, let me demonstrate what that is. It does not allow me to fly further than 20 meters away from its takeoff, or 30 meters away from its takeoff point. Or actually 20, <laughs> looking on my screen here. Okay, there's the takeoff point over there. Let me start the video recording again. And uh, we'll go over to the takeoff point. So if I was on low battery and farther than, you know, 20 meters, it would come back into that circle. Okay, there we go right now. It's doing a low battery return to home. I have no control over it right now. It's, it's climbing. It's going up to 30 meters, I'm guessing, or 20. And then it's going to descend, or it should descend. It's doing its return to home. Let me get out of the way so you can see it. So it climbs to 20 meters, and then it's going to descend, <laughs> even though it's right over its takeoff point. And the low battery returned to home and landing. Okay, again, I want to do that rocket, and there's another thing I wanted to try. After it lands, we'll pop another battery in and do that. So that's its total flight time with the battery. Uh, I'll put that up here, post edit what that flight time is. So keep that in mind, folks. So stop video, well, video recording has stopped. Okay, let me pop another battery into this and we'll get right back to it. So hold on, folks. 
Okay, pop the new battery in there. Um, it's real quick to do that startup once you've had, completed that compass calibration. I didn't need to do it again. Uh, we are set to go. We are good to go here. I'm going to start video recording. And for these flights here, I'm going to focus on the camera instead of the G-Wiz portions of this app because this app seems to be a bit buggy. So um, let's start the motors, put it in the air. I'm recording video. And notice the direction I got. I have it pointed, okay? The camera's pointed that way. We are going to turn on, let me get a bit higher. We are going to turn on headless mode, folks. Headless mode should be operating. And it beeps when it does. And I'm pointing the drone toward me. And I want to point that camera down a bit. Just a bit downward, so you can, a little bit more. Up a bit higher. So you can see me. Okay, that's good. And we're going to do up and away manually by pushing out. It's going to fly that way. Fly back. It's going to fly backwards. It affects folks when I push on the stick. So up and away. And away and we go. <laughs> Trying to keep myself in the picture here. So. You can do crane shots with this. That's what the headless boat is for. <laughs> Let me go up higher. <laughs> and plop it right there. So, pretty cool, huh? Let me, uh, let me raise the camera up. Now, of course, I always press the wrong button. This button is up. The outboard button is up. So try to remember that. I'm trying to remember that. I don't want to go too high because I'll see the props. Now, again, I, there's lag, significant lag with, with what you're seeing on the screen and what actually is happening in the air. Okay, I want to leave it like that because I don't think I'll be seeing props. We're going to come back down now. Okay, coming in reverse. Actually, let me turn off headless mode because I can fly this forward. And just push forward now. Headless mode is off and descending at the same time. And coming back. So yeah, we're gonna focus on the camera for the remainder of the flight. Pushing forward, coming inbound. I hope it's stable, it looks stable on the screen. Coming in and plopping it there. Okay, now what did I wanna do before? Uh, let's see here. Down. This would be down. I wanted to get under it. Let's say hello. Up and away. Now this time it should go above 20 meters. <laughs> I want to take it up to about. Uh, we'll see. We're 50 meters up. 60. <laughs> 70, and we'll plop it there at about 85 meters, and raise the camera up. Let's see here as it goes up. One. Okay, I think that's about it. One down. I don't want to see too much sky. So that should be good. I'm pushing forward, and then we're going to descend. We're going to descend and go out bond. And also, I'm going to increase the rates on this. Make it go faster. Let's go faster now. We're at a higher rate. So descending. So we're going to go high speed now. And we're going to explore the desert. We're coming down, coming down. So we can explore the desert and make sure I am recording at the same time. I'm going to put my glasses on because it's getting hard to see that little drone, or that, and it's not little, <laughs> that drone. Now I can see it. Going out by and again and turning it. Now you can fly without line of sight, folks. It's not hard to do, or I mean, without FPV. 
you just, uh, if the drone is moving, if you push forward on the stick, the drone's moving forward. And if it's moving to the left and you want to bring it back to you, all you got to do is turn left. And I'll demonstrate that right now. I'm turning left, turning left until the movement stops. Keep turning left until that movement stops. Turning, turning, turning. Slow turning. More, more turning left. Okay, that was a harder turn. Now it's coming back toward me. And I could tell because the movement to the left stopped and it's starting to look like it's flying higher in the air. So now pushing forward. It should be coming back to me now. Coming back. Yeah, it's coming back. Now if the movement, I'm going to turn, continue turning left. Turning left. Now the, the drone is moving off. If I'm, lo I'm looking at the drone right now, I'm still flying forward, and it's, turn or it's moving to the right off in the distance. And to bring it back to my position, since it's moving right, is simply turn right. And you do that slow. It's a slow turn. Well, that one was a fast turn because <laughs> I am a high rate right now. <laughs> now i got to go left turn to come back toward my position because it's moving left. And you, it just, it, that's how you bring it back, folks, visually. Off in the distance, if it's moving left, turn left. If it's moving right, turn right while you're pushing forward and that will bring it back toward you and I want to come down lower or too high for what I want to do I want to go explore the desert find see if we can find the trash pile off at about 300 meters from my position how much battery we got we got half half battery again it should come back if we go below battery going back to low rate by the way because I keep uh, overshooting my uh position there but let's go out about 300 meters there I know it's there's a trash pile out in this direction out in the desert here about 300 meters away let's see if we can go find it we're 190 meters and let's lower that camera down a little bit to find the trash pile we should be right by it and yeah there it is let's see if I can find it and down a little bit more. So that's the out there. Let me come down a little lower too so I can see that. <laughs> and raise the camera up. That was too low. Okay. There's the trash pile. People throw the garbage out here. It just annoys the heck out of me. <laughs> so, but. It's, it's an area that I can search for. So to show that this could be a FPV, uh, uh, what do you call it, Explorer drone. That's what I call these. You can use your, your uh, drone to go off into the distance and go looking for things. But let's continue on from there. Push it forward. Out in the desert, more trash out there. There's another road that goes over here. And turning around. And pushing forward. Yep. And from, from off in the distance there, let's do another return to home, folks. So pressing the return to home button. Actually, there. see that building off in the distance there? That's our garbage dump. That's where the people should be taking that garbage, but they don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the garbage dump they go over there and they find out the garbage is 25 bucks or something to dump and they said never mind that okay let's come back home automatic return to home from 500 meters away Four hundred fifty, four hundred forty. it's coming back Three twenty. What if I can adjust the altitude as it's coming back? Pulling down on the stick. No, nope. goes back at thirty meters high. I guess that's preset into it. But here it comes. 
So, you know, my initial thoughts here, drone is great. Uh, we'll see in post-production. I want to look at that video. Um, drone's flying great. Yeah, buggy. Okay, especially, you know, waypoints and circle me didn't seem to work well. Um, the follow me, GPS follow me of your phone seemed to work, work okay. But the uh, optical follow me, no. Nah. And again, it's probably because of my phone. My phone's not the best phone in the world. But even with that, the, the circle position should have worked. But it didn't. So they're going to have to update that app. It's not the drone's fault. That's the app. The app is a little bit buggy. Coming down, coming down, coming down. Yeah, we're still recording. We're still recording. Plop. And let's stop that video recording. And we're done there. We did that. So, the remainder, we're going to do some more exploring. This time, low-level exploring around the area. And this time, I'm going to point the drone in that direction. <clears throat> Start the video recording. Starting the motors. Going back to the air. And low level flying. Let me make sure the camera's pointed right or correctly for what I want to make a little bit higher so I don't hit the bushes too. And there we go. So let's go up on around the area. We'll go out here. There's a gully over here, and we'll go up the gully. The reason I want to do this, because once we hit low battery, I'm curious, is it going to come back right away? I need to go up a bit higher too though. But there we go, we'll go up the gully. Oh. Went up higher. I'm flying this line of sight folks, not FPV. <clears throat> Excuse me again. My allergies are acting up this time of year. So, I can see it out there, easily. And again, I'm flying, if it's moving left, turn left to bring it back to where maybe moving right, turn right. We'll just go up the gully here at low level and explore the area. I gotta go up higher over there because the, the elevation of the land comes up higher over there. That's why I keep climbing a bit. Turning left. Pushing forward again. So it's working well uh, as a flyer. And I hope the camera's working well. But circle me and follow me need, need some work. Or circle me and uh, waypoints needs work. But those aren't important, or important features for me. Uh, important for me is, is range and uh, camera stability. Um, those are the biggies. You have to have a ca stable camera, uh, good control range, and this one seems to have it. Okay, we're at 357 meters, it seems to be climbing. Uh, it's going up and down over there, I'm not sure what's going on here. Not doing that up and down movement, <laughs> but here it's coming back now. I think it hit a thermal over there because <laughs> the land, this, this uh, ground is warming up here. So that was it ran through a thermal over there, flying overhead, coming back down lower again. And pushing forward again. Boy, it descends slowly. Oh, you know what? Is this a low battery return to home? What's the altitude? 20 meters. Yeah, that's doing a return to home, folks. Let's see if I can go. It brought it back within 20 meters. Now I think I got to fly within 20 meters now. That's what happened, folks. I was over there, greater than 20 meters, and you hit that low battery, and then it brings you, brings it inbound to your position. Um, let me stop and start the video real quick. Let's 
just make sure I got video recording. But now I got to fly within 20 meters for the last part of this battery. So we're going to do that. That's interesting. That's what happens on low battery, folks. It brings it home or brings it back within a 20 meter circle. And then you can fly the remainder of the battery here within 20 meters. And I don't think I'm going to do that. We already know what the uh, battery power limit is on this. So let's bring it in. Sync up and give you my final thoughts. Pop it right there. Can you see me? Should be able to see me right now. Drop a bit higher. And boy, is the lag extreme on this. <laughs> it's got a lot of lag, folks. But syncing up the main camera. Making sure that it is recording. Yep, it's recording. <laughs> okay, syncing up the main camera one more time. So my final thoughts, um, good airframe, flies well. Um, I hope that gimbal and camera is good. Um, issues with the app. The app uh, is still a bit buggy, especially if you got an older phone like mine. Mine's in the, uh, well, it ain't too old. It's about three years old. But uh, higher end phones like Samsung and uh, iPhone should probably have no problem at all with this with this app. But if you got an older phone, you're probably going to run into some issues with, particularly with FPV lag and uh, the other issues of. Uh, using advanced features like optical follow me it just ain't going to work with these older phones so so that's the sg906 hope you enjoyed this flight let me show it one more time get a little closer quadcopter 101 signing out hi quadcopter 101 here again hey if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos make sure you subscribe to my channel it's real simple just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe and also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button that way you get notified when i release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out so give it a try folks